We're down at Alton Park today with our F80 M3 manual and we've finally got a dry track day. So since we did the fast road geometry alignment back at base, we've not been able to get out in the dry at a track to get some solid feedback and some solid data on the car. So we've come down to Alton Park today. The weather is finally on our side. We've waited till August, we've had a whole month of rain, but finally we've got some sunshine. So we're gonna go around, we've got the data logger strapped into the car, which we'll go through in a minute, and we're gonna get some good dry laps under our belt to see if we can see any major differences between the standard car and the fast road geometry alignment settings we've put on there. And also it's gonna give us a really nice baseline to use the car as standard that we can then improve from and see what the differences are. So a couple of things, if you're taking your car down to a track day just to check before you go out, that can be really quite important to make you have a much better day. Uh, your tyre pressures, that's, that's a major one. So often your tyre pressures are set in the 30 PSI region uh, for road use, but when you go out on track, the temperatures that you, you experience out there because it's such an extreme condition can raise the pressure well into the 40s and beyond which can really kill your tyres off lose a lot of grip and can lead to the car feeling really unsettled so a really nice way of doing it is to go out for about three laps build your pace up slowly work your brakes up get heat into the rim and then pull the car back in and very quickly get a tyre pressure gauge onto the wheel and drop the pressures down to an operating pressure, usually between 30 to 34 PSI. It does depend on tyre and car, but it's a really nice way of getting grip back into the car and not ruining your tyres for no reason as well. Another one, which is very, very important, is check your wheel torques. If possible to buy a torque wrench and a socket, just checking those wheel torques before you head out on circuit is really important because the heat that goes through that rim can cause nuts to expand that they've never experienced before and they can work loose so it's always a nice idea to keep checking those wheel torques throughout the day just to ensure you're perfectly safe out there and you can have the most fun on this on the track day so today we're strapping in our aim evo 4s data logger this is going to read through the OBD, a lot of ECU readings. It's also gonna have its own G and speed readings. It's also gonna give us a GPS track of, of the circuit so we can see exactly how the car's behaving at different points on the circuit. And this is ultimately gonna give us a really nice base setting for how the standard car does around Alton Park in the dry. And it's gonna give us a really nice baseline of data that we can overlay for every change we make to see if any actual data changes occur for different components and for different upgrades we're gonna make on this journey. So up here we've got the GPS sensor, that's just magnetic and it's stuck on there. So this is gonna give us a beacon effectively to map the circuit and it's gonna also know when we've crossed the line to, to restart the data for every lap and it can build lap on lap. So this is gonna generate a lot of different data plots that we can use and isolate. So we can look at things like cornering G, cornering speed, steering wheel angle. We can take a look at how the traction control is interfering or not interfering out of there on circuit. So we can see how much grip is being generated from that. And we can overlay that with each different upgrade and see if we're making actual differences to the car itself. All right, so we're gonna head out now um, and just get some laps under our belt and get some base data set and uh, we'll see how we get on. So we're going to show you a quick lap from the track day um, in the dry at Alton Park and just, just run through the differences in the car since the geometry alignment and also outline some issues that are still present that are going to be addressed as well. So coming down the straight here, the car feels good, there's a nice amount of power in the car, slightly easy through this corner because we're just overtaking that car there. So immediately on the brakes, we're getting a lot more stability under heavy braking. The car's staying straight, it's not trying to squirm around like it did at Donington, so that's really nice on the confidence. Coming into, the, into this corner here, again, on the brakes, really nice and stable, giving that confidence to lean onto the tire at the back. So again, really quite a, a mid-speed corner there, but it relies on a lot of load transferring to the right-hand side of the car. So it's nice to have that confidence in the rear end that it's not gonna oversteer when we do that. Through this corner here, we're probably lifting off a little bit too much. That is due to the understeer that's still present in the chassis, just removing a bit of confidence in the car through the higher speed corners. But then as soon as we come into the braking zone here, super stable on the brakes, and then again, we're turning in the cars, being really responsive to the steering and on throttle on corner exit, it's really hooking up and just pushing the car out. It's very slightly switching traction on there, um, but nowhere near as much as we were getting at Donington Park. Through the slower stuff, through this section here, as soon as we're turning that steering wheel, the car's being responsive. It's almost got a pointy attitude now, like it's up on its toes. So it's much more in connection with the driver as soon as we turn that steering wheel. Here's a nice example of the stability in the braking. So very hard on the brakes, one hand on the wheel, and again, really nice stable braking and still nice sharp pointy turning. Through the slower speed stuff is where it really shows itself that the direction changes are much easier 
with the tow settings that are installed. And again, we're able to get right back on that throttle and corner exit and let that rear traction do its thing and just hook the car up and pushes out the corner. Whereas before, we were getting the traction like much more than that, even in semi-slip mode. Again, through this section here, we're coming in nice and speed and we're able to lean onto that contact patch now on the rear and have the confidence to get on the throttle earlier for that corner exit. So we're increasing pace through there with more traction for the back. Over this brow here, you'll see the traction light just blip just then. And that's as the car's unloading itself over that crest it is trying to spin those wheels so we can address that a little bit by looking into dampers down the line and, and getting the rebound to work better to keep the tire in contact with the ground at all times but we are going to need parts for that again on this lap into the first corner really heavy braking zone and again really nice stability and feedback from the car starting to get a little bit of fade as the laps get in so which we, we will need to address um, but on the whole the stability of the car has improved quite quite a lot through here we did get a little bit too fast and as you can see there understeered wide and that is where we do still have a slight underlying issue which is the understeer in the chassis ignore that cloud that was just from a car that blew up so we're coming down here again and into this corner here there is the issue of the the lack of confidence through the really high speed sections in the front tire and this ultimately comes down to a lack of camber being there so because we're moving at such a high high pace we're transferring a lot more G onto the outside edge and it's rolling off the tire. So this is giving us the issue of understeer and through the higher speed sections, you'll see me actively backing off a little bit and that's just to keep the front in check. So I know we're not gonna come off track. So that's somewhere we need to address, I'd say with components in the next episode and um, just to bring that level of confidence back into the car. But on the whole, since the geometry alignment compared to Donington, we've got a much sharper car to work with. And again, there, slight oversteer through that section there as it bumps off the curb and again really nice catch it with ease and that's again having all that traction and available and a lot of feedback now through the actual geometry to the driver the reason that car did oversteer over the bump is actually because of again this damper issue we've, we've talked about which is the car is under sprung and over damped so you see here through the sections the car's leaning in low it's like it's really leaning over due to the soft springs but when we hit that that curb at pace previously it set the car into oversteer because it just shocked it that much and the damper wasn't capable of absorbing the shock so that's where we're going to need a, a more refined option down the road to get that under control and keep the car much more stable over those curbs and those quick interferences so that's it from those two laps and um, so yeah so overall a much better more planted stable car that's more direct more pointy and a lot more traction at the rear through the apex and on corner exit but we do still have a few issues to address and um, which is like how the car rides the bumps and also getting that confidence into the front end at high speed, which is going to be our next step. Okay, so we've just finished up here at Alton Park for the day. Uh, we've got plenty of dry laps in, loads of seat time, which was really nice. And we've got a few takeaways from the car overall. So with the geometry alignments over standard, it is a lot better out on track than it was before. All we've got to compare to is that is the Donington uh, evening session that we went to, which was dry. And already the car is a lot more directional. So when you turn the wheel, it wants to turn and it will go really nicely as, as you turn and steer. And another really major takeaway is the traction on throttle on corner exit and at apex. So because we've now got the camber at the rear to lean onto, it's not having that twitch mid corner anymore. It's having a really nice stable platform to lean onto at the rear. Then on corner exit, we're able to get fully back on the throttle and there's no interference from the chassis systems. It's just hooking up and it's just pushing the car out the corner, having loads of traction at the back. So there's still some issues to address and still a lot of things to improve, but overall, really happy with how the car is now and as a standard machine it's a phenomenal car just to take on track like the power the power the balance and the chassis are all great but we're now really at the edge of a lot when it comes to pushing the grip through the tire and we're backing off a lot especially after a few laps so i think it's time now to start the upgrades let's get the first stage on there and make the first big improvement so check out next time and we'll be installing some lowering springs and some front camber plates to give more front camber and get a lot more traction at the front and help with the diving and help with that understeer just to get the car a little bit more stable at speed.